Amor has this obsessive quality. The love is, feels impossible by all objective standards, and that's where we keep referring to Parvati, the uh, Hindu princess who had this obsession with the great god Shiva and had the audacity to think that this young adolescent girl living in this remote mountain village could even hope to attract the great god Shiva to her in love. This amorous attraction I have been experiencing is another impossible love. There's a huge age gap. And I've had these infatuations before and I've told you about them with these young singers and the young people in my uh, circle of acquaintances and friends. And this is the same except the, the thing that's different this time is it's reciprocated. She has told me in no uncertain terms that she feels this same unprecedented rush of amour for me as I feel for her. Wow. As I've said many times, all you need is the one way. You don't need the reciprocity. If you just have that one way obsessive being possessed, that's the fuel we channel as shamans. But if it's reciprocated, so much the better. What a bonus. Both of us feel that we're in love for the first time. We thought we were in love before, but this time it's beyond. So again, when I entered into this and took interest in this young woman, uh, I knew this was impossible by objective standards. How could she possibly feel the same rush of emotion for me who's so much older than her and there's so many social taboos about these odd couples, those taboos that used to exist for multiracial couples and it used to exist for gay and lesbian couples, all these social pressures that say, oh, only these, this type of person and this type of person are allowed to fall in love with each other. Well, we've been shattering all those barriers. And of course, uh, the May-December, the big age gap, is another one we're still not over that hump yet. People look at you kind of funny. What's going on here? Are you deluding yourself? Is someone taking advantage of someone here? So again, there's this kind of illicit Ness to many of these amorous unions, these relationships, these partnerships that form. And they say, he's gone off the deep end. She's in over her head. She was a much more rational person before, and now she's just throwing her life away for this crazy love. Yes, it is crazy by those rational, ordinary standards of the community. And we've talked many sessions about part of the shaman discipline is uh, guzzling the source's presence in order to achieve an extraordinary level of experience and an extraordinary level of promotion. You're no longer that person who's maybe content to work in your little cubicle. And the teenager in school is not necessarily focused on the homework assignment. But it doesn't have to be that way. I've discovered when I'm writing that Amor Wave, there's so much raw source power there where I'm getting all the work done at a higher level than I ever got done before, and I have all this extra energy to pour into her. It's a win-win. It enhances your whole quality of life. But again, to those ordinary people on the shore versus the shaman community in this river, they're a little threatened by all of this chaotic, wild, bipolar, crazy energy of a moor. And to them, it feels and looks like an illicit force. It chooses you. Again, your brain doesn't decide, oh, I, she'll be a good wife and she'll be a good mom and she'll be a good hostess when I bring the business associates over and all these rational factors. Uh, you're not the one choosing. It chooses you.